Hello and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwara Kapoor. The latest developments in Uttarakhand's political crisis continues to be our top focus. Now, Centre has decided to challenge a high court order allowing Congress to prove its majority in the Assembly on Thursday despite the President's rule. Also, we'll get you all the updates from Brussels as Prime Minister Narendra Modi has landed there this morning. He will attend the India-EU summit. All the details are to follow. Let us begin with the headlines. Budget session of Parliament prorogued to enable government to issue ordinance authorizing expenditure beyond 1st of April in Uttarakhand. Decision at a meeting of Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs last night. Harish Rawat gets another chance to prove majority in Uttarakhand Assembly. High Court sets 31st of March as the date for floor test. Also allows Congress rebels to participate. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in terror hit Brussels this morning as part of the three nation tour. Modi salutes resilience of people of Belgium, looks to strengthen trade ties as he prepares to attend India EU summit. Centre allows 100% FDI in most e commerce retailing. FDI not permitted in inventory based model of e commerce. And first semi-finals of the World T20 Championship in form New Zealand take on England at Firosha Kotla in Delhi today. For our top focus, the budget session of Parliament has been prorogued in the middle of the session. Now, the rare development came about last night to enable the government to issue an ordinance for authorising expenditure beyond 1st of April in the centrally ruled Uttarakhand following the political crisis there. Well, the decision was taking, uh, taken at a meeting of the, the Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs chaired by Home Minister Rajnath Singh. The decision was taken following questions being raised over the status of the appropriation bill, which was declared as passed by the Speaker in the Uttarakhand Assembly, but under controversial circumstances. Now, the budget session, which began on 23rd of February, has been in recess since the 16th of March and was to meet again on 25th of April. With only two days uh, left, for the, now government uh, would not have been in a position to issue an ordinance uh, for drawing funds uh, from the consolidated fund to enable the state to meet its expenditure needs beyond 1st of April since it is under President's rule. Meanwhile, in related news, uh, now the central government has decided to challenge the Nenital High Court order allowing Congress government in the state to prove its majority in the Assembly on Thursday despite President's rule. Now, Attorney General of India, Mukul Rotagi, will today argue for the centre in the court. Earlier, the flow test for the Congress government in Uttarakhand, which could not take place on 28th of March, was scheduled to take place on 31st of March. The State High Court passed the order on Tuesday, giving another chance to Harish Rawat to prove his majority in the House. A fresh turn of events in the Uttarakhand political crisis. The State High Court has given another chance to former Chief Minister Harish Rawat to prove his majority on the floor of the Assembly. And I am happy to say this that the Supreme High Court has given such a strong strength, a strong strength, a strong strength, a the court has set 31st March as the date for the crucial trust vote in which the rebel Congress MLAs will also be allowed to take part. The result of the floor test, however, will not be declared in the Assembly. Instead, it will be presented in court in a sealed envelope. The court has allowed only, I repeat, only for purposes of counting, voting by the disqualified as well as the non-disqualified MLAs but has specifically said two things. One, that their votes of the disqualified will be treated and kept separately for identification. Secondly, that they will be subject to the final outcome. The High Court of the Hamari Jeet hai. Vidhan Sabha Adhyaksh ne Lok Tantra ki hathya karke, nao vidhaayko ki sadasya galat tarah se samapt kar di thi. High Court time hai mauka diya dobara se apne sadan mein jane ka. Yeh Hamari Jeet hai. 
The BJP called it an unprecedented order. The Congress termed it a befitting reply to the center's autocratic policies. If Congress party ke kisi pravakta ne isko apni jeet mani hai, to shayad Bharashtachar ke madhyam se jeet mani ja sakti hai. Lekin samvedhanik prakriya ke rehte aur jo samvedhanik mapdand hai, ye kisi roop se bhi jeet ke roop mein nahi dekha ja sakti. We are confident that Congress government will prove its majority. We are confident that constitution will prevail. We are confident that Modi ji and Shah ji's duo, who wants to subjugate federalism and who want to murder democracy, will not succeed in their attempt. Good that uh, uh, the High Court hearing took place immediately and they have taken cognizance of the situation and have nullified uh, the attempt by the central government to destabilize a uh, opposition ruled government in a very small state. Constitutional experts believe it's not a judgment but an order and is subject to judicial review. For the moment it is an order not a judgment. Yeah. Now the uh, thing is that any central decision to impose president's rule has to then pass two tests. It has to be passed by parliament and it is also subject to judicial review by the courts. President's rule was imposed in Uttarakhand on Sunday, just a day before a floor test was to be held for the Harish Rawat government. The centre had recommended imposition of President's rule in the state following an emergency meeting on Saturday as the political crisis precipitated in the hill state. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in the aftermath of uh, the political crisis in Uttarakhand, a high-level Congress delegation met President Pranam Mukherjee on Tuesday and sought his intervention to protect the duly elected non-BJP governments in the states. Now, the party alleged that after Arunachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, party dispensations there could be targeted. A senior party leader who was uh, in the delegation said that the president was apprised of the apprehensions about the Congress governments in other states being targeted by the Modi government. The delegation, led by Congress leader in the Lok Sabha, Malik Arjun Kharge, brought up the issue when they called on Mukherjee over the situation in Hyderabad Central University in the wake of suicide by Dalit scholar Rohit Vemula. The Congress delegation's meeting with the president came on a day when Uttarakhand High Court ordered a floor test in the State Assembly on 31st of March. Pradhan Mantri cooperative federalism ki baat karte hain. Dusri taraf, ek ke baad ek. निशाना कांग्रेस की सरकारों पर है उनको डिस्टेबलाइज करने के लिए है और ये जो जनमत है उसके खिलाफ है जो चुनी हुई सरकारें हैं उनको असंवैधानिक तरीके से दल बदल करा के खरीद फरोख्त करा के और ऐसे साधनों का उपयोग करके जो कोई भी प्रजातंत्र और संविधान कानून जिसकी अनुमति नहीं देता उस पर रोक लगनी चाहिए हमने अपना अपनी चिंता अपना आक्रोश now to the other big story of the day, well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi reached Brussels today morning in the first leg of his three-nation tour. But in a statement before his departure, Modi hailed the resilience and spirit of the people of Belgium in the wake of the horrific Brussels bombing. He also said uh, the 13th India-EU summit will advance a multifaceted engagement across a whole range of sectors and is described the 28-member bloc as a vital trading partner. He will attend the India-EU summit later today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi leaving for Brussels on Wednesday night for the first leg of his three-nation tour of Belgium, United States and Saudi Arabia. This will be Prime Minister Modi's first official visit to Belgium. MEA tweeted an invigorating mix of bilateral and multilateral diplomacy in the offing as Prime Minister Narendra Modi departs on three-nation tour. In a statement prior to his departure, Prime Minister Modi at the outset hailed the resilience and spirit of the people of Belgium, saying that India stands shoulder to shoulder with them in the wake of the horrific attacks in Brussels and share the grief of those who lost their loved ones. In the Belgian capital, Prime Minister Modi will attend the 13th India-EU summit. He will be holding bilateral talks with his Belgian counterpart Charles Michael later in the day. We are looking to enhancing India-Belgium cooperation in areas of priority for us and areas that are of mutual interest, such as counter-terrorism. The recent attacks in Brussels will, of course, be a very important part of the discussions. They'll be the starting point of the engagement. We will uh, discuss 
advancing cooperation in renewable energy, biotechnology, shipping, ICT, and taxation. The India-EU summit is aimed at deepening the strategic partnership between the two sides. There will be deliberations on ways to finalize the free trade agreement. Modi said, our relations with Belgium are deep-rooted and have stood the test of time. Within the EU, Belgium is India's second largest trading partner. My meeting with the Belgian Prime Minister aims to expand trade, investment and high-technology partnership with this important EU member. European Union India is the number one export destination, uh, number one source of FDI and uh, one of our largest trading partners. In the European Sang, Belgium is our number two trading partner hai, after Germany. And the other thing, Belgium is the number two export destination hai, outside the European Union after the United States. So, in both of them, the economic relationship is very big. In Brussels, the Prime Minister will meet top businessmen, including a delegation of diamond traders, and will also address the Indian diaspora. He will meet parliamentarians and a delegation of Indologists. From Brussels, Prime Minister Modi will leave for Washington to attend the Nuclear Security Summit on 31st of March and 1st of April. And from there, he will travel to Saudi Arabia on a two-day visit with a focus on boosting energy and security cooperation. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on in the bulletin now, will the NIA plans to seek access to Jesh e Mohammed Chief Maulana Masood Azhar when it meets uh, the Pakistani Joint Investigation Team today? And this comes uh, after the investigating agency conducted the Park GIT yesterday to the Pathan Court Air Base over the probe into the January attack. After allowing the Pakistani Joint Investigation Team to visit the Pathan Court Air Base, the National Investigative Agency will now seek access to Pakistan-based jesh e Mohammed Chief Maulana Masood Azhar and his brother-in-law Abdul Rauf. The two are alleged masterminds of the attack on the air base on the intervening night of January 1 and 2 this year. We'll talk to the team tomorrow. Whatever we have to seek, we'll tell them. And about, I can't go public on that. But what about the specific, uh, you know, demand like Masood Azhar and Rao Azhar? We'll what tell them what, whatever we want. We'll tell them tomorrow. Including these? Of course. While Azhar is wanted by India in several terror-related incidents, including the Parliament attack case and bomb blast at Srinagar Assembly in 2001. Rauf has a pending red corner notice against him in connection with the 1999 hijacking of an Indian Airlines plane from Kathmandu. When the NIA meets the Pakistani Joint Investigation Team today, they will seek details of the investigation into the Pathan Court attack done so far by them. The NIA has so far handed over a list of requests including identifying some of the phone numbers which terrorists had called minutes before launching the attack. India plans to provide the Pakistani team access to all witnesses in the case, barring the security personnel from NSG or BSF who participated in the gun battle. Pakistan is also yet to make a request for questioning the witnesses or sharing of evidence. जहां पे पठान कोट के लिए पाकिस्तान की टीम आ चुकी है और उनको इजाजत दी गई है इसी तरह बंबई का हमला हुए हुआ इसी तरह बाकी हमले जो हुए हैं उसके लिए भी हिंदुस्तान की एक टीम तैयार होनी चाहिए और पाकिस्तान को उस टीम को इजाजत देनी चाहिए द पाकिस्तान टीम हैज आल्सो कन्वेड टू द एनआईए दैट इट हैज द मैंडेट टू कलेक्ट एविडेंस इन द केस अंडर पाकिस्तान्स लॉ एंड एज सच देयर विल बी नो ज्यूडिशियल रिक्वेस्ट फॉर इट NIA has asked the Pakistan JIT whether any judicial request would be sent by Islamabad for collection of evidence against JEM terrorists who carried out the attacks. Jaish e Mohammed terrorists had carried out the terror attack on the intervening night of January 1 and 2 on the strategic IAF base in Pathan Court. Seven security personnel were killed, while bodies of four terrorists were also recovered. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, in news at 10, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Odds are really stacked against Congress at the moment. Modi magic has failed every stage now. People will see who can deliver good, who has an experience. Which card is Congress playing? We are playing secular cards, inclusive cards. Badruddin Ajmal says that he is going to be the kingmaker during 2016 elections. People are the kingmaker. Not one individual. Your trusted aide, Himanta Biswa Sarma, left the party and he's joined the rival camp of the BJP. I was happy that he left the party. 
Watch to the point with Assam Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi only on Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the centre has allowed 100% FDI through automatic route in most of the e-commerce retailing. This development is aimed at boosting domestic as well as foreign players like uh, Flipkart and Amazon. The decision to allow 100% FDI in marketplace e-retail where the company only provides a platform for buyer and seller to connect will help domestic players like Flipkart and Snapdeal to attract more uh, foreign investment. It will also open the doors for the foreign retailers like Alibaba to set shop easily in the country. Well, as per the guidelines issued by the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion on FDI in e-commerce, foreign direct investment has not been permitted in inventory-based model of e-commerce. And today will mark the third day of the ninth edition of the Biennial Defence Expo India. After the approval from India Inc. to the Defence Procurement Procedure, Defence Minister Manohar Parikar on Tuesday sought to woo global investors. The DPP is expected to ensure transparency and speed in acquisition process and boost the Make in India initiative to reduce dependence on imports. He said that the newly unveiled policy provides a level playing field for all stakeholders. Parikar also said that the new DPP frees the department from procedural tangles. The Defence Minister had unveiled the new DPP on the first day of the Expo. The Defence Expo 2016 is the country's biggest land, naval and homeland security exhibition. And traditionally held in the national capital, the Defence Expo 2016 was relocated uh, to Nokiu Plate Plateau in South Goa for the current edition. 47 countries uh, from around the world are taking part in this exhibition. The event will be open to public on 31st of March and uh, that too by prior registration on other days. In spite of that, we spent 3,41,000 crores for the maintenance of defence force in the country. And this is they have been doing for last 68 years. Why do we do that? It is an eventuality which requires us to do this. Same way, the requirement of defense forces forces us to create capabilities, build capabilities for certain products which may not be required continuously by us. This expertise which is built up cannot be retained by a private sector because it costs. Well, moving on, uh, former Union Home Secretary G.K. Pillay is likely to be examined by a one-man inquiry panel probing the issue of uh, missing files related to the case of alleged fake encounter killing of Ishra Jaha in Gujarat. Pillai was the Union Home Secretary when the Home Ministry had filed two contradictory affidavits in the Gujarat High Court in 2009 on the Ishra Jaha case. Now, the probe panel has been mandated to inquire into the circumstances in which the files related to the case uh, uh, of Isha Jaha, the 19-year-old college student who was killed in an alleged fake encounter in 2004, went missing. Well, the papers which went missing from the Home Ministry include a copy of an affidavit awaited by the Attorney General and submitted in the Gujarat High Court in 2009, and also the draft of the second affidavit awaited by the AG on which changes were made. Remember, Pillai had recently claimed that as Home Minister, P. Jidamram had recalled the file a month after the original affidavit which de described Rishat Jaha and her slain aides as LET operatives. Now, Chidambaram had said that Pillai was equally responsible for the changes in the affidavit. Meanwhile, a war of words has broken out between India and Pakistan after the Pakistan Army released a video of an arrested ex-Indian Navy officer purportedly confessing his involvement in terror activities in Baluchistan. India has promptly rubbished the allegations. The head of the Pakistan Army's Inter-Services Public Relations held a press conference in Islamabad to release the video, saying that Kulbushan Yadav confessed working for Indian intelligence agency Ro. Now, Yadav had been arrested recently in Pakistan, which described him as an officer of the Indian Navy, a claim debunked by the Indian government, which said that he had no link with the government since his premature retirement from the Navy. But Pakistan claimed that Yadav was still a serving officer due to retire in 2022. Official sources in New Delhi rubbished the purported confession and said it was Pakistan's ploy to deflect the attention from its own problem of homegrown terrorism.
But there's certain certainly reason to be skeptical, given that we've seen Pakistan take into custody terrorist leaders and then only to release them shortly thereafter. And if you look at the circumstances as the timing when they disclosed the capture of this uh, alleged Indian agent, this happened when the Iranian president, Mr. Rouhani, was in Pakistan. And the issue was uh, carved out in a way to uh, pressure uh, Iran vis-a-vis -vis its relationship with India. Well, obviously there are certain, there are certain parts of the video which have not been which have not been shown, that those parts, that uh, the Pakistanis feel would go against their so-called arguments that he's a so-called spy of, uh, of India and for India as well. More news from Pakistan. Well, over 5,000 people have been rounded up in the last two days uh, since the Lahore Park bombing. More than 200 are still in custody. Now, a joint investigation team has also been formed to probe the blast. About 56 intelligence base operations were carried out by the Punjab police, whereas 16 raids were conducted by the Counter-Terrorism Department. A large number of people were present at the crowded gulshan -e iqbal Park in Lahore when a powerful blast took place on Sunday. The brutal attack by a suicide bomber who is believed to be in his 20s was claimed by Jamatul Arhar, a splinter group of the tehreek e taliban Pakistan. At least 73 people were killed and 300 others were injured in this suicide bombing. In operations, 5,221 people in the same way, the have been round up. After the और 216 लोग जो हैं उनको फॉर फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेशन जो है वो उनको जो है वो हिरासत में लिया गया है और ऑन टू सम इंटरनेशनल न्यूज़ कमिंग इन फ्रॉम म्यांमार वेल हितन क्यो द मैन चोजन बाय ओंग सांग सू ची टू सर्व एज हर प्रॉक्सी वाज सोन इन एज द म्यांमार्स प्रेसिडेंट टुडे नाउ दिस इज अ हिस्टोरिक पावर शिफ्ट अवे फ्रॉम आउटराइट आर्मी रूल the 69-year-old close aide and confidant of uh, Aung San Suu Kyi pledged to be faithful to the people of the Republic of uh, Union of Myanmar at a ceremony at the country's uh, parliament in the capital. Although NLD leader Aung San Suu Kyi is barred from uh, presidency, she said that she will rule by proxy. On the sports, uh, well, England and New Zealand will play out the first semi-finals of uh, the ICC World T20 tournament at Firosha Kotla in New Delhi today. Ahead of the match, uh, both the teams are shedding sweat and are working hard on the nets with an eye to qualify for the final. It's the first semi-finals of the ICC World T20 tournament today. England and New Zealand will take on each other at Delhi's Firosha Kotla Stadium. The Kiwis will look to continue their winning streak with no losses so far in the tournament despite being in a tough group comprising Australia, England, Pakistan and Bangladesh. A confident Kiwis will rely on spinners like Michel Santner and Ish Sodi in this match. The duo have lagged havoc on the opposition so far in the series. The only aspect that could bother New Zealand is their not so impressive batting. They have crossed the 150 run mark on only one occasion in the tournament so far. We need to look at the conditions before we um, decide on, on our final side, but naturally you yeah, consider the, the track you're playing on, the, the ground size and, and also the opposition, and um, at this stage we, we're still yet to um, decide on, on an 11. For a young England team, on the other hand, the tournament has gone off well so far now that they have been able to survive till the business end of the mega event. The advantage for them is familiarity with the conditions, having already played two matches at Kotla. England team will largely depend on Joe Root, Alex Hales, Josh Butler and Skipper Morgan for a batting advantage. I can't quite believe where we are overall with our one-day cricket and our T20 cricket. I think um, the guys that we've selected have done outstandingly well. They've showed a great amount of attitude in, in, in learning. Today's match promises to be quite an exciting one, with Kiwi bowlers up against the English batsmen. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Smile on his face because... Let's get you some more sporting action now in Sports Speed.
Three Indian boxers, including top seeds Mary Com and Shiva Thapa, advanced to the semi finals of the Asia Oceana qualifying tournament, standing just one win away from clinching an Olympic berth. A fourth seed, Devendra Singh, also entered into the semis. With today's wins, uh, the boxers are assured of at least bronze medals, but will have to make the finals uh, to be assumed of a ticket for Rio Games in August. In case of Shiva and Devendra, they will have a shot at the Olympic qualification, even if they lose tomorrow, as a box-off between the bronze medalists will decide the third qualifier in the men's draw. India suffered a 2-1 defeat to Turkmenistan in the final game of their World Cup qualifying campaign at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Kochi on Tuesday. Sandesh Jingan opened the scoring for India in the 27th minute. Later, goals from Turkmenistan's uh, Amarov Arslan and uh, Adayev Serdali in the second half helped them emerge victorious. Manu Atri and Ashwini Punapa defeated Saurabh Agarwal and Shraddha Tiwari in the round one and reached the main draw of the Indian Open. In another match, Indian shuttler Saurabh Barma turned former top 10 player Kenichi Tag of Japan in uh, straight games to reach the main draw of the Indian Open Super, making his way back to the international circuit after a series of injuries. Saurabh registered a 21-18, 21-10 win over fellow countrymen. RMV Guru Saindad in the men's singles round one before notching up a surprise victory over Tago 21-18, 21-12 to reach the round of 32. In tennis, uh, top uh, seeded world number one Novak Djokovic beat his uh, Austrian uh, opponent uh, Dominic Thiem 6-3, 6-4 in the fourth round at the Miami Open in Florida. Djokovic needed uh, four match points before finally prevailing against the world number 14. With this victory, Djokovic sets up a quarter-final clash against uh, Czech Republic's uh, Thomas Burditch. That's all in this edition of uh, News at 10. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day ahead.